also have emergency places that we can take generally women into the hospital and if they need a C-section, they can get one. But what happens if there was a big um, disaster, okay, and there was no way that women could go in, okay? You as a birth team and those of you that are helping to decide what can hap should happen should triage the women according to risk, okay? And there are a few types of women that could be at risk for an obstructive labor. One is mothers who have previously had C-sections without any vaginal births. If the woman has had one C-section and I mean, one vaginal birth, you know that she can do it, okay? Uh, first time moms who are under five feet tall with small pelvises or mothers in their early teens. You're not gonna find so many, you know, 12 year olds and so forth that are pregnant in the United States, okay? So these ones you would like to separate and you would send out to them the people with most experience and the people who are the most creative, okay? Because it is going to take creativeness to get these women through. They are going to go into labor and they are gonna feel like pushing. They're gonna push for a while. They're not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna need to back them off. You're gonna need to feed them good. And their labor will probably go like this, okay? And so when they can, you put them, you have them go to sleep if they can rest between contractions. You do everything, you use your herbs, lobelia. A lobelia enema will help knock a lady out, okay? She might be able to go to sleep for 45 minutes, an hour or two, okay? And rest is so important, okay? How did you do that? A one or two drops in some water? Oh no, I put a, a, an ounce in. <laughs> <laughs> I put anybody to sleep. She come out. A tincture or a, a tea? Tincture. If you have tea, make a strong tea and give that in an enema. Oh, I would just, you don't really need to put a lot of water in it. You want to do more of an injection. Okay. So maybe a couple or half a couple, three fourths of a cup of water, something like that. Give her an injection to try to put her down. Another thing that is absolutely wonderful as far as a rectum injection is liquid minerals. Liquid minerals will up her energy. I had a lady once who was, had had three C-sections three C -sections, and she wanted to have a vaginal birth and it took her two days, okay? And so she was really pretty worn out by the time she got there but I gave her an injection of the mineral water and it pulled her in and she was able to have the baby and uh, whatever. The next time she had a baby, she had it in two and a half hours, okay? So it's that first one that's really hard, the Pathfinder and those that are, are doing. Yes? What about wheatgrass juice? Wheatgrass juice would be wonderful. You need to keep feeding the mother and giving her nutrition. So the highest thing you can do, the wonderful teas and wheatgrass juice and carrot juice and all those kind of things, you want everything that goes in her mouth to be optimal nutrition to give her the energy. Now, I have a book at home, which I forgot to bring. Um, <coughs> by a Dr. Coffin in the 1800s, okay? And I just absolutely adore that book because he was a practitioner who used herbs in helping women get through labor. Now, he tells these stories of these women who were really in a sad shape, okay? And how he would bring them around, okay? So, for instance, 
one woman he went in to help had been in labor for about seven days, okay? And the medical doctors that were treating her were keeping the room cold, okay? Some delivery rooms are cold, but that's just for the doctor, I think. Not for the mother, remember we need heat, okay? Keeping her cold and giving her uh, opiate drugs, okay? Opium is a very big relaxer, but uh, whatever. So, the, f the husband comes to Dr. Coffin and says, come to my, w my wife tonight, I'm afraid that she is gonna die before morning if you don't come and help, okay? So Dr. Coffin gets there and sees the, the, uh, what's been going on and took over and what he did was, the first thing he did was have a hot fire made so to warm up the room and give the mother the heat. Then he asked for a hot cup of raspberry leaf tea to be made. <laughs> And he used the raspberry leaf tea, and he put a half a teaspoon of cayenne in it, okay? Now, that would warm the mother up internally, yeah. wouldn't it? And then he had, he also gave the mother lobelia in, by mouth, okay? And he, uh, used uh, lobelia seed, but lobelia plant would be fine. In other words, whatever you have, tincture, put a little bit of that in the, with the uh, raspberry leaf tea. And so she was getting a relaxant, which is lobelia, a stimulant, which is cayenne, and the raspberry leaf tea, which is very nutritive. So they kept giving this to the lady all night. So every 15 minutes, okay, she was getting part of a teacup full, a sip or two, okay? Every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, okay? And then by morning, she went to sleep and she slept for eight hours, okay? Now, when she woke, oh, the other thing that they gave her was they did give her an enema, okay, because she had been taking these opiate drugs and they constipate. So they gave her an enema, uh, a lobelia enema, okay, to relax her also. And she went to sleep, as I say, for the eight hours or whatever, then she woke up and she was hungry, really hungry. First time she'd had appetite in over a week. And so they fixed her something good to eat and by the time she got through eating, her contractions commenced, okay? And they hadn't even checked her. In other words, vaginally or anything to see where she was at. They hadn't checked her because they said, we're not interested in delivering the baby. We're first interested in saving this mother's life. And that's exactly what it is, is giving the strength and helping the mother get the strength that she can have enough strength to actually deliver. And so what they did was she, after she ate, her, her contractions started and, you know, within 30 minutes they delivered the baby. They went in and checked and the baby was a breech, okay? And one foot was against the pubic bone and the other was against the sacrum. It was like that. And they took the legs and put them together and the baby came out and she was just fine. It really is amazing how much energy women really have. I have had, you know, first time moms especially, you know, labor for a couple days, okay? And, you know, I was completely worn out. I went back to do the baby check the next day after the baby was born and the mother was doing a lot better than I was. It is amazing how much strength women have. But by using the herbs, it is really very helpful and a way to keep the mother going 
and give her the energy that she needs to, to actually give birth. So don't ever be disheartened. I think Riley and I went on a four-day labor last year, and um, she was kind of off and on, off and on, off and on. But uh, she did it in the end, even if she didn't, she didn't uh, like what I had her do <laughs> in the end. The position for her to give birth was on her back with her knees up. That opened her up the best of anything to get the baby finally out. And um, it worked. Be persistent. Remember ebb and flow. If she's wanting to, uh, getting tired or whatever, if you can get her to sleep for a while, fantastic. Don't push it too far. In other words, work as the ebb and flow of of labor goes, okay? Do you have any questions about prolonged labor or anything? Well, during that time, uh, are you checking them vaginally to see if they're making progress? Yes, but then I am, but sometimes I don't do a lot of, of um, exams because if their labor isn't super good, do you know what I mean? I'm just wasting my time doing that. Not that. I mean, if a woman is ready to push, I'm going to check her. But I don't need to always check. I mean, if they're in labor for two days, I don't need to check them every 30 minutes. But, you know, I'm probably going to check them uh, several times a day if they're actively. Because what they do is that they get real active for a while, and then they do it. And castor oil, you know, we used castor oil, we used all the stuff that we personally had <laughs> we, could, we could use, but castor oil is a good help. If you've got someone even in labor who isn't making any progress, give them castor oil and it'll pull them in. It won't last for a real long time, but it will help them, help them do it. Yes? What about black cohosh, blue cohosh? I use a lot of the of blue cohosh, particularly because it makes stronger contractions. And uh, it uh, warms them up. I think that black cohosh actually pulls the estrogen up. Um, and you have to have your estrogen up to actually deliver a baby. So that can be helpful too. I think that blue cohosh is the most wonderful herb that any midwife could ever use. <laughs> It's wonderful. I love it. Um, but you, you know, you in prolonged labors, you've got to prime them and put the stuff in. But then sometimes you've got to back off and give them relaxants. And one of the best relaxants that I have ever found to use is um, standard processes Mintrans. They're mineral tranquilizers. And to back someone off and let them sleep for a little bit, I might give them 20, 25 little pills. They're just little pills, okay? Uh, it can either do that or it can get them started, okay? Well, they might go to sleep and then wake up and feel pressure and want to push, okay? It's whatever the body kind of wants to do. You have to go with what the body wants to do at the time. Yes? When you were referring to castor oil, are you referring to it topically? No, you take it. Take it internally, and this is how you do it. If you know you're going to give someone castor oil, like they're a couple weeks past due and your licensure says you can't deliver them <laughs> any longer, uh, you have them take a blue cohosh a few times during the day, a dropper full, then have them eat all day good. Lots of food, okay? Uh, an hour after dinner, have them take the castor oil, and it's... Uh, it is two ounces of castor oil in one half cup of orange juice. And what you do is you take the, a level spoonful of baking soda, you put it in, you stir it up, and it starts to froth, okay? And then you have to, the lady has to drink it all the way down real fast and then go lay down in bed so she doesn't throw it up. She needs to go to sleep, take a nap, 
and it'll hit her in 45 minutes to four hours. And when she starts having diarrhea, then she'll be start cramping more and it can put her into labor. Now, it doesn't always last the whole labor. I've seen women go from a zero, I mean, start at completely closed cervix and go to five centimeters and stop, okay? Then you do it the next night, the same time, same thing, and then they'll usually finish the job. And just the reason I had asked is because I've been taught in my herbology classes to not give anyone castor oil. Yeah, that's what I was taught too. I was Dr. taught to never give anyone that. castor oil. Oh, not to give castor oil? Yeah, Dr. Christopher says yeah. castor oil is never to be taken internally. Well, yeah, I disagree with it. You know, I have heard herbalists say, and an herbal midwife say, castor oil, how terrible. Well, it's certainly better than going in and having Pitocin given to you. I haven't seen any really bad effects, except to the fact that sometimes it can make you have diarrhea and not put you into labor. Then that's bad news, okay. But really, I think it is a wonderful thing. Castor oil not only cleans out the bowels, which makes the babies drop and puts more pressure on the cervix, which makes contractions, but it also has prostaglandins in it, okay? And prostaglandins make you contract. Another thing that has prostaglandin in is semen, okay? Have someone go make some passionate love with their husband with a lot of nipple stimulation, okay? Which <laughs> makes the uh, pituitary work better, okay? So uh, that's another way to do it. But castor oil really, it can be fantastic as far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't, you know, I would never take it myself, but <laughs> 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 I have never taken it. I have to say that. What about the other bowel helpers, like, like the lower bowel formula with cascara? Um, the lower bowel formula is good, and it would, it just doesn't have the prostaglandins in it, but if you use that, a bunch of it, okay, with with a little bit of sex, it probably would work a lot better, okay? Well, what about prune juice and apple juice? Because when he does the three-day cleanse, he drinks 16 ounces of prune juice followed by eight ounces of apple juice, water, apple juice. Boy, that makes me go to the bathroom way lots. Yeah, that would, that would probably help too. I had an experience of a, a lady who went into labor early and they kept her in the hospital for uh, quite a while until she was able to deliver. And uh, she called me and she said, if I can't, they decided it was time for her to have the baby. And she said, if I can't get into labor, uh, if this doesn't work, it's what they're doing to me. She said, I'm gonna have a C-section, Diane. What would you suggest? I said, have them give you an enema. Now, <laughs> I, we always say, oh, well, we don't give enemas, but sometimes that's the greatest thing on earth. So she had the nurse give her an enemy, enema. <laughs> it is an enemy, <laughs> enema. And she went into labor and had the baby vaginally. Cleaning the bowels out is really important. So even like Dr. Coffin that I talked to you about, heat, okay, heat, internally and externally. Oh, I'll have to tell you something else that he does, okay? What he'd do is he'd go in and someone had a stalled labor and so forth to help him out, to heat him up. He would get a bucket of water, okay, and he would heat bricks on the stove and then put the bricks in the water. So you get steam. Then he'd sit the mother in a chair over the hot pot and put a blanket around her, okay, so the inside would steam and be hot. And he would bring women into full course, course labor by doing that along with lobelia and cayenne and red raspberry leaf tea, okay? So that principle of being warm is extremely important. And you know, water is really good for labor, but it has to be warm. I had a gal once who in the middle of the summer went out in her, kids swimming pool, you know, the little blow up ones, and sat there doing the thing, but the water was cold. And it just took her forever. You need to be warm. You need to get the mum.
mum warm. Okay, let's close off this section and get ready for the next. 